so basically, uh, I wanted to take this video to go through how easy it is to set up a Redcoin Core desktop wallet. Uh, speaking off the cuff a bit, we may have to stop recording as things uh, happen. With luck, we won't. Um, it really isn't a complicated process to get Redcoin Core, uh, at least uh, on the desktop at this moment, up and running. Uh, on the mobile side, we don't have a Redcoin Core branded uh, product just yet. That is something that should be coming, coming pretty quickly. Uh, we've got Electrum spun up as a back end. It's being configured to handle the staking protocol and POSV. Uh, but that's going to translate to a mobile wallet and uh, a Red ID mobile product, uh, tipping product, and, and all that that implies very quickly. For the moment, the core and the, uh, no pun intended, the core, the, the, the cornerstone uh, of our network is and always will be the Redcoin staking wallet. Staking, as a lot of you may know, but some of you may not, is a fundamental network security function for Redcoin. The network wouldn't work without it. So we do always need to maintain as many folks staking using Redcoin as uh, back to the verification of transactions as much as possible. Uh, that's one reason we do encourage it. It's one of the reasons we, we modified our protocol to POSV v2 in order to encourage more folks to stake and gain better returns from that. Uh, that's something we can talk about in other videos and you'll see in, uh, in other content. For the moment, uh, if you can see the screen here, you'll see I've downloaded a couple of items. Uh, Redcoin, the current version as of October 1st, which is this, well, a couple of days before October 1st, today's the 30th, uh, is 3.10.3. .3. That's for Windows, uh, Linux, Apple, uh, should run on any version of Raspberry Pi as well. Compilation is a little tricky with the latest versions of Linux, and we are working for that uh, to be as seamless as possible, but all of the clients do run on all of the platforms as they should. If you're experiencing any problems, feel free to open an issue in, in our GitHub if you know how to do that, or just email uh, one of the support addresses, uh, info at redcoin.com, info at red.love. Uh, we'll do just fine if you're having some issues. Uh, we've got some other support resources coming online shortly that we'll be sharing with you. For the moment, I've downloaded the Win64 version of Redcoin 3.10.3 by going to download.redcoin.com. And there's a couple of options here. You see as we've, uh, we've built and released versions, this is our permanent central repository. So you can always go back if it's necessary, really typically shouldn't be. Um, and you see I've gone to Redcoin Core 3.10.3 and downloaded the Win64 client for this Windows server. I've also, just to speed things up a tiny bit, downloaded the bootstrap file, which is in this folder here. The latest version we've got out is August 10th, which is a few months back, but since we are a six year old chain, uh, we have put rapid sync into this latest version. Uh, we're actually gonna use this video as a test to see just how quickly it syncs. We may opt to pause that process and use the bootstrap just to show people how quickly that works and how that'll bring you up to date. So bear with me for a moment. We are simply going to do a couple of things in anticipation of that. I want to see at this point our, our CPU, I'm working on a virtual machine um, remotely. So we, we do have a tiny bit of network, a uh, little bit of memory usage and CPU uh, before we go ahead and launch the Redcoin uh, wallet client. But I also wanted to point something out because in the nature of, of crypto and these QT desktop wallets, especially uh, with folks who don't understand, there's a, a, a process, there's databases being used and things like that when you open your wallet. Things happen in the background that you may not actually see overtly. So what I'm gonna do, I've downloaded a, a utility called Beartail. It's a, it's a free version of a commercial uh, product you can feel free to take a look at. It's actually over here, plug for using their free product is at uh, baremetalsoft.com. And what that lets you do is in Windows, uh, it uses a command that's very common in Linux, which is tail, uh, to follow the end of a log file. So what we're going to use this program for, and we can just run it here. We'll actually have to start it, start the Redcoin wallet in order to see the file that I want to use this on. Um, but what this will let us do is watch the log file in real time as the wallet operates and see what's going on. And we can actually talk about some of the things that are happening there. but. First thing we would have to do is go ahead and, oh, we haven't even installed it. 
when you install, you can pretty much, even if you're upgrading, uh, the only real important thing at this point is having a valid backup of your wallet file uh, or your private keys exported. Uh, we'll talk a bit more in de detail and depth about that in a different video. Uh, but it is routinely pretty safe to run our installers on top of the installed version. It does not manipulate the wallet file if there already is one. Um, we try to be very aware of that, obviously, for obvious reasons. But it will create, uh, especially on the first run, which is what this is in a fresh machine, it'll create shortcuts and start menu folders and things like that, unless you choose not to. You can choose do not create start cut shortcuts. And it'll run through here and do its little thing, and now it's done. You can opt to run the, uh, the program directly from here, or you can go to the Start menu and find out where it's installed and run it from there. Find it a little easier just to leave that checked and say Finish. And now you'll see our splash screen. Oh, maybe not just yet. I haven't installed a new version myself in a little bit. Um, typically, the defaults are... Uh, perfectly acceptable, and this, this folder, and I'll show everybody a, short, a shortcut in how to get there. This is what's typically referred to as the data folder, the Redcoin data folder. If you uninstall or reinstall, this folder is not removed. This folder is what, cop, it is what contains your, oh, say, custom data directory, just to, to see this folder. This is what contains information for all of your, your programs that are installed. At this point, since we haven't chosen it, let me do this. Copying that, we're going to say use the default, which is the same thing there. And now it's creating it. Okay. Now, what we can do over here while that's happening is use Beartail, open it up, open up the program, and say open. And then there are a couple of different ways to get to where we need to go. Now, I copied that path from the installer and you can actually just paste it in the top here and hit enter or another trick is down the bottom or actually in the same spot up here as well if you type in percent sign app data percent sign it will take you to that same folder and you notice uh, we saw just a minute ago Adobe Microsoft Opera because that's what, what's installed on this machine there's now a red coin folder well we want to go in that folder and we want to look at this debug file. It actually is a debug.log file. Uh, it's not being displayed by default from Windows, but that is the file we want to open. And you'll see immediately there's entries here about different folders being created and bound to addresses and connected. And now it's attempting to synchronize as quickly as it can from basically a starting point of zero. Now, this is one of the reasons that I wanted to kind of point this out. It will automatically find peers from our DNS seeds. These are trusted servers of a sort that the dev team maintains and runs that provides that service to the network. Um, it'll take those and basically reach out to clients and find clients and begin syncing. That is all that you need to do. Theoretically, at this point, you could let this run. You see, uh, we do have quite a bit of catch up to do six years and 34 weeks behind because that's how old our blockchain is. Uh, and every staking wallet, every, every client is a full node and has a full copy of the blockchain. Uh, that presents some technical challenges, obviously, and it does store some, some uh, or take up some disk space. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to point out is as this is happening, it doesn't really seem like anything is happening, but you, you know, in the, in the GUI, in the wallet itself, but you can see in the background, all sorts of entries here talking about new, new uh, chains, update, date tips. It's actually working so hard with the disc that CPU is at a hundred percent and it's trying very hard to, uh, to process all of those blocks as quickly as it can. Now, what we can do, and that's why we downloaded the bootstrap file, just to bring it a whole bunch closer. Now, this, this is a much optimized process from what it was, uh, and it actually will run through the entire six years plus. Uh, I believe at this point our full sync is inside of a day, uh, maybe a few hours. Um, 
I don't know what the official uh, estimation is there, but what we're going to do is exit out of the client as it's trying to sync. You notice it is six years and 34 weeks behind. It's important, of course, that you say exit and not just force it to quit or try to exit out or just file exit because that stuff that just happened, that box that popped up and this stuff, uh, again, we are working with databases and files and whenever you kill the wallet just in the middle of what it's doing, you can lose, lose stuff. Things can be corrupted because they're not closed correctly or files are inappropriately written to. So we encourage folks to do the file exit wherever possible. Don't kill the process unless you have to, even if it seems like it's hung. It, it, the reason that I brought up this bear tail program and to show you people the debug log really is to show that there's stuff happening in the background. We'll see more of that when the wallet's actually up to date and active. So for the moment, this is what we're gonna do. We've downloaded this and it's a four gigabyte file. We've downloaded this from download.redcoin.com. Now we're gonna extract it. Now again, this is all Windows, uh, very similar stuff in, in Apple and in, in the Macintosh world, but I will let John, who is a Mac head, uh, do the demos on those. For the moment, what this is doing is extracting two folders and those folders are going to go into that same path that we said before that you could get to by copying the path from the installer or by typing percent sign app data for application percent sign and enter. And then Redcoin here is your Redcoin data directory. Now, you see, since we ran the wallet and it's not running presently, these are the two files that we're gonna, or the two folders, I'm sorry, that we're gonna replace. And that's what contains the actual blockchain files and data that uh, has the transactions that your keys are run against to see what your holdings, your Redcoin and, and all of that is. That's a universal copy, every Redcoin client has a, the same copy of those folders. So there's no private information in there that you're giving away, that you're copying onto your, your network. You do need to be aware that it, it is the copy of the blockchain that the Redcoin wallet is running. So don't just copy that, that bootstrap from anywhere. You know, a lot of times folks will try to be malicious and get you to run files or, or put things in here uh, or give them copies specifically here. The wallet.dat file is the most valuable. Uh, that file contains or encrypts your actual private keys, especially as you stake or as you add to the wallet. Um, there is no real way to to uh, protect your, your, your funds if you give that file or allow somebody to have access to it. So just be aware. Um, so this, this folder popped up because it was done unzipping. So what we're going to do is go into the Redcoin data folder and you see these blocks and chain state. We're simply going to delete, and then we're going to copy these guys over. Uh, we actually eh, we will move them over so it doesn't take the time to copy and take an extra bunch of disk space. And, and just as an indication, this is 5.13 gigs uh, un uncompressed. Those folders now contain all of this blockchain data, other related files. Feel free to look at them, they're all basically uh, inscrutable if you're not a techie. Um, and, and again, you can look at all of, of these files. The important one and the one that we're tracking with the Beartail program is debug uh, or debug.log. And okay, so now if I close this folder and we go back to Redcoin. Uh, you'll see in the back here, Beartail picked up that, that it's running ag again because the log is being modified. So it is opening and posting messages as it does that. We'll wait just a moment for it to load the block index from the files that we just downloaded. And you'll see we are already synced up from 2014 when the chain was launched to August of 2020 which is quite a bit of time. Uh, if you had a wallet that had coins in it, it would typically follow this process um, by uh, rescanning or re-indexing these files 
to make sure that any transactions that relate to your keys are in reflected in the wallet. Uh, they would be in the blockchain, of course, and you can see now, not only did it load that, we're now seven weeks behind, but it's actually showing in the background uh, messages being posted in the log about checking for database inconsistencies and wallet files, what the versions are. Really, really not a, okay. And you can see that there, there was a, uh, an older client that tried to connect there. And some of this we will just basically allow to happen. But one of the things that I will point out is on the network, we presently have, still have some, some version two uh, clients. And all of the working clients should be or not should be, but our version three at this point on the correct chain. The fact that these version two guys are out there and they're actually broadcasting or trying to broadcast is, is causing a bit of chatter, we'll say, on the network and, and a lot of throughput, uh, not disk storage because the blocks aren't stored. But one of the features we've put in the latest uh, 3.10.3 version actually is the ability to address some of that behavior and to... Uh, to, to make sure that, that you know, we're connected to the right clients. You can see, uh, even though if I right click here, we have the ability to disconnect or ban some of these. I'll show you if I disconnect this guy, just drops off. Uh, the next one, if I ban, let's say for an hour, it'll be entered here. And you can see in the back, things are happening. Now we typically want to remove these guys from the list. I'm gonna say this one for a day because the, the information that they're broadcasting really just doesn't have any value to the, the, the valid uh, red coin chain at this point. You can see a 3.0.1 client just connected. At, at this point, I believe we are all version three clients. You don't have to do this. Uh, client management will take care of that for you, but you notice things are moving a little more streamlined in the background since we are uh, version three clients here. Uh, especially on sync, it, it's simply, it's sort of competing and having to say, no, I can't take information from these clients while it's trying to download the, the chunks of data from other ones. Uh, that can be, you know, it's a little bit like shouting in a noisy room and nobody really gets hurt. Uh, it's not necessary that you clear those older clients out yourself. As I said, the wallet will do that for you. Uh, and you can actually see as it syncs up and, and collects data, and I can, I can close this now. We are seven weeks behind still as it was still doing that sync. Um, we are going to pause for a moment and let that finish. Okay, as we're letting this uh, continue syncing. Uh, funny little note, I decided to be clever and turn the priority up on the uh, client so that it would sync a little bit faster and locked myself out of the remote session. So just allowing it to, to work happily. Uh, you can see it's moving relatively quickly. Uh, this is a reflection of where it is in the blockchain. Uh, and again, we've got a block every minute. So that's 60 blocks to process uh, per hour. Um, I believe that's 1440 a day and roughly about 10,000 a week. Uh, each one of those blocks needs to be processed and added to the blockchain, checked for transactions. So it, it isn't just downloading a bunch of data and letting it sit there. There's a lot of, of background stuff that's happening uh, that is relatively important. Um, that actually is some of the complexity in the wallet that you know we, we work on consistently in trying to improve it. Uh, and of course, that's a process. Uh, this version 3.10.3 uh, will be the reference version, the standard version that we're going to stick with uh, for at least a uh, period of time because we are turning our focus back at this point to full-time Red ID development and mobile wallet development. Uh, some of that will relate to core technology as we're using some of the core sync technology in this core wallet to facilitate the data uh, that's being moved around by Red ID. Uh, but it's also uh, required, you know, quite a bit of, of invention and creativity. Uh, just a a uh, a reminder that we are moving that to a mobile focus. We will obviously have a desktop version 
in some capacity, but a big decision, you know, in terms of the available population of users, uh, most, the vast majority of folks are on mobile primarily, uh, and that's only getting to be more and more compelling. Um, pretty much a no-brainer of a decision. So as we're watching this sync, uh, you can see it's, it's jumped about a week just in the last few minutes of my talking, uh, September 5th. Seven, ten. It's it is moving rather nicely, and and again, this is uh, an improvement that might go unnoticed, might not. If anybody's spun up a wallet from scratch and had to wait, you know, the better part of three or four days for things to sink and settle, and and for your funds to quote appear, uh, that actually is it raises a good point, and that is to say that we can take a look at the receiving addresses contained in this wallet, and we can send funds to those receiving addresses. But until it reaches sync, which should be really a matter of minutes at this at this speed, uh, in the wallet we won't see that because it's got a reflection. You know, it's it's looking at the data that it knows about. If it's not up to date and we've just sent those coins, uh, those coins are at that point in time in the blockchain, and our client isn't up to that yet. Uh, that's a, a reason that a lot of people get upset uh, if they haven't synced their wallets and they they've sent coins to the address. Uh, I can show you actually, if I take a moment here, under file, you have sending addresses and receiving addresses. I could actually say, call this one test address one. And this is a valid address on the, uh, on the Redcoin blockchain. I can send funds to that and I actually will once it catches up, uh, just so we can see in real time how quickly, how quick it is. Uh, but the point there is really, I'm not going to be able to see those funds if I send them right this second because my my own client here is two weeks behind still. So going back to the uh, help page that we were on before, um, the option that we were at, by the way, if you wanted to see that in debug window here, there is some good information here. It shows you what the date of the blockchain is and you can actually see that changing reasonably quickly as it processes blocks. Um, console here, you can issue uh, almost any number of commands uh, to get in-depth information about uh, the, the blockchain, your staking, uh, lots of aspects of the Redcoin network. Uh, help will tell you the documented commands in there. We actually are adding new RPC commands with each evolution. Um, and one of the things that will come into play in another video is this uh, get raw transaction, send raw transaction. Um, we do have one known bug with the earlier versions of the wallet, uh, 3.10.0 and .1, I believe. Um, so you definitely should be upgrading to .2 or .3 at least. Um, at least, that's the current version. Uh, .2 at least, 3.10.3 preferably. Um, and we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, and then you can also see amount of network traffic. Uh, we're, we're not moving a lot because, you know, we, we brought it up to date with about four something, five, five, five gigs of data, I'm sorry, uncompressed. This is bringing in uh, up-to-date information for the remaining ones. And then, of course, the peer management and list uh, that we showed uh, earlier. And, of course, our friends here are still banned. So I can close this debug window nine days behind. If I open the debug window again, go back to information, you can see where we are. Uh, you can also see in the scrolling file happening behind us, this progress is actually a percent. Uh, so that we're at 97% of a, a full chain at this point. Um, block height, 347 and change. It's moving too fast actually to, to grab the number. And that's, that's a testament to the work, really, that's been done here to bring some of the new features and sync and, and optimize the way the chain's being handled. Uh, one of the tricks, one of the challenges, I should say, to what we're doing is make sh making sure that that all happens very seamlessly and reliably and, you know, as optimally as possible. Obviously, these millions of blocks, things are going on in the background. This is a very complex, as I said, uh, kind of technical system. It just happens to work very well. Uh, we have a great base of code to work with and, uh, you know, some inspiration from the Bitcoin guys working on, on their own features, some of which we, we roll in as we move the code forward. Um, but it really is not just a very simple piece of software. And people should realize that 
Um, that's part of the beauty of blockchain is that we can divorce that complexity from what's actually happening and make it usable to this degree. The next evolution of our wallet is going to be a, a much prettier, you know, sleeker, streamlined, and a bunch more features, but with that same reliability and functionality under the hood uh, that's important. Um, we are not quite up to date, but just about. It does, it does pause sometimes. Uh, again, it is struggling to, to get things done with the resources, in this case, of a single virtual computer. Um, it's going back and forth between 99 and, and 60 CPU, uh, and that's not atypical. Um, all right, and you can see already it's starting to function, doing other things in the background. It's, it's checking for P, proof of work blocks. That's a legacy piece from the, uh, the old 2014, 2015 days. Um, and it looks like as we were just chatting there, we are now up to date, Wednesday, September 30th, 3.33. And of course we have zero red coin in our wallets. So what I'm going to do is just pause for one second and copy that uh, address over to, to um, another computer. And then I'll come back and hit send while we're on video. So stand by for one second. Okay, so I am going to, um, we're unpaused. It took me about two minutes just to get that address over to uh, to a machine that I have a wallet on. Uh, and you can see in the background, not much has changed with the, the log. It's it's at 1% one, 1 here and it is processing new, new blocks as it comes in. So I'm gonna turn over here and hit send just as soon as, come on back see how quickly this responds. All right, I'm gonna hit send now. And I see in the log over on this machine that it has collected those inputs, bundled them up, sent them over to that address. See how quickly the network decides to process that as quickly as another block comes along. We will see. Oh, look, there it is right away. Gotta love red coin. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, it's going to confirm just to make sure that it's not being double spent. Uh, many of you are familiar with how to use the crypto wallets, you can double click on some of these and get some information. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but it has broadcast to the network. Um, this is a transaction ID. You can track if something happens. Uh, for some folks who are using uh, older level wallets, one of the reasons we are encouraging you to, to uh, upgrade to uh, 3.10.2 or now to 3.10.3 .3 is that the, uh, the earlier .10 versions were actually using, in some cases, too low a fee. So broadcasted transactions wouldn't be picked up and we, we have to do a little bit to, to lower the default thresholds for what a node will handle and then rebroadcast those transactions uh, or zap them out of the wallet. It's not the end of the world because, you know, they're always, there's, there's a resolution, it is a blockchain, it's not gonna, you know, disappear into the ether. Uh, but I did want to just point that out, this transaction links to each of these, and if you want to look them up in the Explorer or if we need to work with them uh, to get the raw transaction, this is a good place. This is where you would find it. So I'm going to close this, and you see uh, this is starting to confirm. It's got one of the six recommended confirmations, and that's because one block has gone by. You see as another block goes by, it's going to switch to two of six recommended confirmations. And within the next four or five minutes, as it gets through the six recommended confirms, that will be fully spendable, available, and you can, uh, well, go ahead and spend it. Um, see, and the, the beautiful thing about a one minute block time, or average, I should say one minute block time, because they do seem to be coming a bit faster than that uh, briefly, is, is exactly that, that our, conf our, our transactions move very quickly. 
Uh, it means that you can send something, know that it's there, and be able to spend it again right away without waiting the minutes and hours involved in things like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So uh, it's just another, uh, another advantage. And if I wanted to send that back, I could do the same as it is right now. It's going to let those coins mature for about eight hours, and then it'll start staking them. Uh, if you're not familiar with staking, you definitely should read some of our documentation. Staking on the Redcoin network is a network security function, not a financial function, but you will receive uh, at this point uh, about, I believe, 14% annual returns on your stakes on whatever you have. Um, that would mean uh, for me, I would get about, so I do the math right in my head, is that seven Redcoin, 0.7 Redcoin <laughs> over the course of a year off this wallet? Uh, it, it is a bit of a random process. And uh, it is important to the network, obviously, to, to have that security and validation of transactions across peers, since there is no center to the network. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we do encourage folks to stake. But it also is a way to get the base five-ish percent uh, interest times our, our dynamic multiplier, which at this point is 2.2. So that's 5% times 2.2%. That's a personal return based on the population of the, the network at a given moment and the, the trend of the interest rate, we have built that protocol to target 5% growth of the network. So in whatever, whatever larger returns individuals are making, it's because only a portion of the network is actually staking. So we have figured out how to allocate that to those folks to engage them and really help people realize the value of staking on, on a network like ours. Uh, it really does, you know, preserve the performance, the efficiency, and, and the ability to use red, and that's really what we're all about. So I think that's a good place to stop for the moment. Um, thank you for watching. That's been a not particularly long process of zero to fully spun up of the 3.10.3 Redcoin Core wallet. Um, and that, that was using the bootstrap file. Uh, you can let it sync. You saw how fast the last bits uh, sank, synced, sunk, uh, synced. Uh, quickly uh, once we got that, that bootstrap in place. If you just let it run, I, I believe uh, I, John Nash, our, our tech dev, clocked it at a few hours. Given what we just saw, that seems pretty reasonable. Um, and, and again, uh, if you have any problems or you can't figure out what to do with the transaction, please feel free to reach out to the team. We pride ourselves on being accessible and available. Uh, you can reach us in any of the channels on our website, red.love. 2Ds, R-E-D-D dot love or redcoin.com. Uh, and, and, you know, don't let it go. If you have a problem, you're not sure what's going on, we're, we're here to help. Uh, that's why we're doing videos like these and that's why we do the work that we do. Uh, and if you want to be a part of that and you want to help, again, we, we always encourage volunteers. We are an all-volunteer team uh, doing this for the love of what Red is and what it can be and what we can do with this amazing technology. So if that seems to stir and tug at your heartstrings, do feel free to, to reach out and let us know that. And if you can do something to help the project, we'd be utterly pleased to have you join. Um, I believe we'll end this video there. Uh, wallet installation and basic operation, I guess is what we could call it. Thanks very much for watching and stay tuned for the next one.